Mastergrade SD. In this whole new high-end SD brand, Mastergrade technology has been integrated into the SD Gundam body to implement the widest range of articulation and is an overwhelmingly detailed SD series kit. The armor is cast in two different tones to further enhance the intricate and stylish design, resulting in a new look combined with a sense of density unique to SD kits. With the MG SD Freedom Gundam, features include camera eyes, Realistic multi-layer effects are achieved by placing clear parts over detailed internal parts. Reflection cut. A new glimmering effect has been implemented where parts are sculpted with intricate concaves and convexes to reflect light efficiently. Real metallic gloss injection. Materials that give off a bright metallic sheen have been used in the gloss injection process to enhance the metallic look and achieve realistic effects. Intricate frame structures developed through the Mastergrade series have been condensed into the size of an SD kit. Smooth movements are achieved using the internal frame as a core. At least that is what the box says about this particular kit. This right here is the Mastergrade SD Freedom Gundam. Now this is the first of its kind. It does say series on the box, so hopefully we will be seeing some more. And I have to say, so far, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by this kit. Anyway, if you do want one of these all of your own, I got this through Hobby Link Japan, so I'll throw a link down there in the description. But anyway, let's get right into it. So straight out of the gate, this is a kit that thoroughly, thoroughly impresses. This is a sizable box by SD standards and matches what we would have seen before with some simpler Master Grades, including the Master Grade Endless Waltz line of wing kits. This is a kit that comes on a whopping 15 colors and is 100% color accurate. There are no color correcting stickers in here at all, and the only stickers we get are decals. They're not the greatest decals around, these are sticker style. Would have been nicer to see something like water slides, but what can you do? And we do have a set of standard beam, saber beams in here as well. When it comes to the runners that are included in here, we've got the A runner. This is the usual multi-colored runner. We've got some nice clear yellow for the eyes. The gloss injection parts are here as well. It's a nice gloss injection metallic plastic, by the way. We get two of the same runner B. These are some of the white armor parts from the kit, mainly for the arms and legs. C1 and C2 is all the red that is present on this kit. A nice vivid red, but still a little bit on the subdued side in that Gundam Freedom kind of way. Runner D1 and D2, these are the grey sections, should I say the light grey sections, that break up the whites on this kit into pure white and light grey. Runner E makes up a lot of this kit's inner frame. We've got some of the rifle on here as well, but it's mainly the core of the kit, including the torso and the waist unit. Runner F, or should I say both runner Fs, are identical. These are to make up the parts that are mirrored on this kit, like the legs and the arms. Runner G1 and G2, these are the black parts from this kit. This is a very nice black. On actually putting this kit together, it doesn't mark as much as black usually does, which is very, very impressive. Runner H1 and H2 are the blue parts in this kit, and just like I mentioned with the black, blue is a color that usually does mark inside these kits when you're cutting them out, but that is not the case here. This is some premium plastic. Finally then, we've got Runner I, which are the clear parts for inside of the wings, as well as the cameras in the head. So this is one impressively color-separated kit. So when it does come to the build of this kit, this is so, so much fun. Now, I didn't build it the way it says to build it in the instructions. Basically, I wanted to showcase the fact that this kit does have a full inner frame. Well, a 90% full inner frame. I'll actually mention straight away, the forearms on this cannot be built with just inner frame. They actually do require the armor parts to hold together, especially to hold on the hands. So that's the only part that doesn't have a full inner frame, but the rest is spectacular. So yeah, basically I just built all of the inner frame first and then rebuilt the armor onto it. This is not the way it says to do it in the instructions. It basically says build each part piece by piece, you know, head, torso, waist, legs, arms with all the armor in the inner frame too. But you can build it inner frame first if you want to. So yeah, this kit does exactly what it says in the box. This is and feels like a master grade just with SD proportions. We've got all the gimmicks going on in the internal frame. It's so impressive. And this took me an entire day to build. Usually I could pump out two or three model kits in a day, but not with this one. So if you're looking for something that'll take you a little while, but still love the SD look, this is definitely going to be the kit for you. As is the usual case with SD kits, the head is the most detailed aspect of this kit. We've got so much going on, the head builds up in a whole bunch of layers. Like I showed you already, it does have a full inner frame. The most impressive aspect is definitely the eyes, like the package mentioned. That is, you've got the metallic injection parts underneath, 
you pop on what's almost like a bandit mask for around that, and then you slot in the tiny, tiny clear yellow parts for the eyes, which means you can actually see through those eyes to what looks like the camera sensors underneath. That is absolutely beautiful. Everything then layers on perfectly with that white and light gray armor, and the whole thing looks spectacular. Just to finish this kit off, I didn't actually take any footage of this because it got a bit too late and too dark, but what I did is I did use some pen lining pens, the ones I always use, which are the flow type ones. I used a combination of gray and black. And finally, I did use some of the stickers where, well, they were a little bit of a letdown. These are sticker style decals and you can always see the edge on these when you stick them on. Bandai hasn't announced any water slides for this just yet, but it's something I would recommend waiting for in case they do because these stickers do cheapen the kit a little bit, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in the aesthetics, which is right now. So now jumping into the aesthetics, and I have to say, I am absolutely floored by this kit. Now, I did expect it to be good, but I didn't expect to fall in love with it as much as I have. I've always loved the look of SD kits, but they're just not for me. They're such simple, simple little kits, and if you wanted them to look, well, reasonably cool, you'd have to put a whole lot of work into them. This did something I never thought Bandai would do. It took pretty much the over-the-top look of the NX Edge minifigures. These guys right here. This is essentially the proportions this kit has. So this is more like a model kit of an NX Edge than it is an SD. The SD proportions are gone. Now, all my kits are actually in storage at the moment till I get my office and my workshop up to working specs, so I do not have an SD to compare this to right now, but this is what your usual SD Gundam looks like, and this is what this one looks like. So they've changed the proportions entirely to give us more articulation and an overly more dynamic look. This thing is insanely beautiful. So jumping on into that full 360 degree spin so you can see every angle for yourself. And I'm going to start this with the backpack off, the weapons off, so you can see everything about it. This is an incredibly, incredibly intricate kit. Now, I did notice we do have this slot backpack adapter for using with the particular backpack on this. So I hope Bandai makes more seed kits like this so you can swap the parts around. So far, the joints seem very universal. So if we get the same sort of things in future with the same ball joints in the waists, same pegs in the shoulders, this could be a very customizable line if Bandai keeps it up. Like I mentioned, I did pan line this kit and added some of the stickers, so this isn't what it looks like directly out of box, but this is pretty much what you're going to get. All the individual parts of this absolutely bounce. It looks so, so good. The two-tone white looks fantastic. The red is really, really nice. The black is glossy and premium. Sometimes Bandai's black doesn't look that great. And speaking of sometimes not looking that great, the metallic injection parts in Bandai's kits can be hit or miss, but in this, they are 100% hit. There's no paint, no color correcting stickers on this whatsoever. This is what it looks like, and it is gorgeous. So now jumping into some of the details on this kit, and the first thing that always catches me about this particular model are these ridiculously beautiful eyes. So as you can see, we've got clear parts over the metallic sections inside. This just looks incredible. The amount of detail in there just looks like it goes on forever. That is so nicely done. This really does kind of work a lot better than what we usually get, which is either just plain eyes in a kind of plain plastic or the usual kind of foil stickers. On top of that, we've got a fully translucent blue segment in the upper camera as well. This does exactly what we would have seen before. As you can see, there is a camera segment in behind that, which is such a ridiculous level of detail. And we do have another one of those around back. Even like the way they've opened up the back of the head to the inner frame there, Bandai are completely just flexing with this kit. The two shades of white looks phenomenal. That is the pristine white and the light gray. All of the colors here look great. I will mention, like I said already, I did pan line this kit using gray and black to bring out all of the lines all over the place. I use black usually on pure lines, as in what I would assume is gaps between the armor and then I just use grey to kind of highlight some other aspects. Not uh, highlight the mold lines like I did there, uh, yeah, you should sand that first. But yeah, the layering of parts on this is phenomenal, like the red onto the black onto the light grey there and this is all over the place. This kit does have classic and by classic I mean around the 2000s or 2010 master grade style hands, just a little bit kind of mixed up a little bit. So that does mean you can't necessarily cut all these fingers apart like you could modify the older kits because these three are attached together onto only two ball joints. The index and this are free. 
These hands always look a little bit awkward, but then again it is an SD, so not the worst really. One hidden aspect that's always worth judging a kit on is the detail on the bottom of the feet. So it is very, very nice. It's all in the one color, but it is phenomenally detailed once again. The only real down point with this kit is the stickers. So these are sticker style stickers. So I prefer rub-ons or water slides compared to these for one main reason. So if we flip around to the back, there's a couple of them here. You can see that these things have killer borders, so if the light catches them, you can see the entire rectangle these are printed onto. This goes for all of them. In the right light, you can not see it, but if the right light catches it, it can look pretty, pretty bad, like what you're seeing with that one right there. That's why I don't tend to use these stickers too much, especially not on black or dark segments, because they do stand out quite a bit. They are awful for catching dust as well, like this one did when I was trying to attach it. Not a huge fan of that. If they do ever, Decide to release some water slides, I say go with those. So as you can see, a whole lot more come on this sheet than I actually use. These are nice designs, they're very subtle. We've got some nice ones with some text, lots of caution markings, etc, etc. These sort of point identifier ones, but sadly all of these are on rectangular segments. You could, you know, painstakingly cut them out with a hobby knife, but that would take forever. So finally now onto a size comparison. Sorry, I do not have an SD around for comparison, but as you can see, this thing is big. There it is side by side with a standard high grade, which is the high grade aerial. And there it is beside a master grade, which is anything but standard. And that is the master grade extreme strike freedom Gundam. So as you can see, the master grade SD is a fairly sizable kit, almost the same size as a high grade, just kind of with shorter limbs and a much bigger head. Now that I've got the master grade extreme out there, I might as well just vent a little bit of a frustration I know I have in some of the Gunpla fanbase has as well, and that is, last year, Master Grade wise, all we got was this right here and the Master Grade DOM. This isn't a standard Master Grade release, and the DOM was a rehash. This year, all we're getting is the Master Grade Verka Zeta Gundam, which I don't consider a standard Master Grade, so it seems like standard normal Master Grades we used to get a lot of just seem to have evaporated entirely. We've gotten nothing new since what, maybe the Eclipse? It's been a while. But anyway, on to the accessories. Jumping now into the accessories, and here's everything that comes inside of the box with the MGSD Freedom Gundam. So this is the usual Gundam loadout of swords, board, and beam rifle, the swords being a pair of beam sabers, the board being Freedom's usual shield, and the rifle being the beam rifle. So like I mentioned when it comes to the hands in here, these are like the hands we would have seen around 2010-ish Master Grade kits like the Double O line. So the only real difference is the amount of ball joints. You may not be able to separate them up. We do have a hinge in the wrist, which is extremely, extremely nice, but it does mean you can't get any kind of extended finger poses because they are always curled. I'll also mention these are the only other hands in the box, so there's nothing else in here. When it comes to the beam sabers in here, these are pretty much like your standard beam saber. The beams are the same as we've had for pretty much a long, long time, and the handles are very similar to what we'd normally see, except we have a tab pointing outwards. So winding back to the hands a little bit, the greatest departure we've seen from the older style of these particular hands to these ones right here is the older ones had a tab in the hand that the weapons attached onto, it wore down over time, and then gave up entirely, making them pretty much redundant and useless. These ones, however, have a slot in the palm, so that means you slot the weapons in, which is a much better system. They're bigger tabs, they hold on better, and this works perfectly. In case you're curious, you can pop the beam sabers in regular grip or reverse grip if you want, and there's a bit of a pose of what this kit looks like holding onto its beam sabers. And this is such a joy to pose. It's got so much nice articulation, it always looks great. This is SD, really elevated to the next level. So I will mention no action base comes included with this kit. The action base that I am actually using is Good Smile Company's Simple Stand, in case you want to know. But one of the coolest aspects about this kit is where the adapter hole is. It's not just in the crotch like a lot of other kits. You do not need an adapter either. In the bottom thruster on the backpack, it just flips down like so, and there's a 3mm slot. Absolute perfection. So the next weapon that we have in here is the beam rifle, and I'll mention again, this is a kit that does not have any stickers included, so everything you're seeing right here is all color separation. I will mention once again, I did pen line this just to bring out some of the detail on it, especially in the darker segments. We have a nice clear segment once again for the sight on this, and all in all, this is a beautiful beam rifle. Attaching the rifle is pretty much the same as the beam sabers. You just make sure all the fingers are out of the way, pop it into that tab, 
There is a peg in the handle, just like we saw with the beam sabers as well, and then wrap the fingers around it, and this works out perfectly. Holds on perfect. We'll mention the way the fingers are kind of flared out does look a little bit on the funny side. Once again, it's an SD, so I'd totally let that pass. And this is one beautiful looking rifle. Fully color accurate, out of box, and looks great in those over-the-top seed shooting poses. When this is not in use, it can be stored. We have a tab on the side of it as well. This can be popped into that little slot round there on the back of the butt flap, holds on tight once again, and that is what it looks like. Perfect. And speaking of weapon storage, I almost forgot the best part. When it comes to seed kits, the storage of the beam sabers on these side skirts has never really been perfected. Whether it's high grade, real grade, master grade, there's always some little bit of an issue with the way they attach in. Bandai has nailed it here. That's probably the great aspect about doing the same kit over and over and over again in different formats. You learn something new every time. So basically what you do is you open this little black segment right here, pop the beam saber in, and then when you close the black segment, it launches the fucking beam saber into oblivion. Wait, no, that's not what's meant to happen. Let's try that again. You pop the beam saber in there, the tab actually goes into a groove, and then you close that black segment in, locking the tab, which locks these into position. These will not fall out. So that issue we've had time and time again with seed kits where the beam sabers will fall out because they're so long and the side skirts getting caught and stuff, not going to happen here. So the last of the accessories we have in here is the shield, and once again, this is a fully featured up shield. It has all the color separation we would have seen on the actual kit itself. There are stickers included for using on it. Once again, these have the same issue that we would have seen with the stickers before, so I only went with the one for example's sake. And around back we have some nice detailing, a handle, and this attachment point. This attachment thing has full rotation there, and we have the articulation there as well, which is a C-clip, if I'm not mistaken. Even though both of the forearms on this kit have an attachment point for attaching something, you can only attach the shield onto the left hand one due to the design of the actual attachment point on the shield itself. Just pops on in like so, and then can fold around to the side of the forearm just like this. This can attach on without attaching it into the hands, which means you can use the beam sabers in both hands with the shield attached, or you can pop the actual handle here into the hand, simple as. This holds on perfect, and it looks spectacular. So as well as the actual accessories that we just took a look at, the Freedom has a ton of onboard weapons as well. First off, we do have Vulcans in both the sides of the head and in the chest. On top of that, then we've got the rail guns, which are attached onto the side skirts. I will mention you cannot actually fold these out when the beam rifle is attached round back. It gets in the way. And to do this, you just fold out the front segments of these. And then the raising part at the back and front are attached via kind of mechanism inside which means they move up simultaneously so if you pull up the back the front will move up if you pull up the front the back will move up finally then we do have those big plasma beam cannons up on the wings which you can use in a multitude of ways if the wings aren't spread out just yet you can just flip them over the shoulder just like so they fold out perfectly and seamlessly if the wings are spread they do the exact same thing but they can also bend over the shoulders and pivot on this point right here so these are incredibly well designed. So finally now jumping on to the articulation and just the usual comment on the actual build and once again this is plastic on plastic no polycaps in the build whatsoever and it is rock solid. Just to test out the articulation on the kit itself I'm gonna pop off the backpack for now we'll take a look at that later. So when it comes to the overall articulation, throwing this into the usual test pose, this thing gets full marks and then some. This is incredible. Every joint you'd want to get some kind of articulation out of, you will. And most of them are far more impressive than you'd ever expect them to be. The knees, the hips, there's a dropping mechanism in the waist, the ab crunch is multi-pointed. The shoulders have some nice articulation both inside the torso and the shoulders themselves it is phenomenal we've got a three-point neck anything you could want to get out of this you will get out of it and it still is that beautiful sd format honestly this works out so so well i am shocked this thing is phenomenal and this is without the wings so i'm not going to go through the entire articulation on this because i would literally be here for the rest of 2023 this thing is so so detailed so i'm just going to go through some of the highlights the neck here has three points of articulation, that is a ball joint on top, and then we've got two points in here so you can get pretty much everything that you could ever want out of it. When it comes to the shoulders, don't try yanking these off, they have that kind of keyhole mechanism, so they have to be upside down in order to actually remove them, so be careful with that, it is really tough. But yeah, we've got a full master grade style shoulder in here that does everything you could ever want, so make sure you get 
nice forward movements towards the front like this right here. The ab crunch does have multiple points. You'll notice through the whole thing I've kind of had him up like this, kind of like the elongated torso effect that does do and the kicked up crotch. But the way he's meant to actually be is more like down like this. And we do also have a mechanism, a dropping mechanism in the waist. So I'll push that all the way up to get him looking like what he should look like. But yeah, the articulation when it comes to when it comes to the ab crunch right here is ridiculous. He can almost pretty much just look at the ground. That with the neck, you will get everything you want from this and more. There it is to the back. Incredible for flying poses. As for the hips, these have a dropping mechanism like I mentioned, so they can drop down like so to make sure that you get even better kicks out of this, which you will. Very, very nice. I will mention this does have ball joint hips. They're balls that attach into that hole and they, well, they work out better than I expected they would. We've got the full rotation at the upper leg here, which goes all the way around for the most part. But one thing that is really cool and something that used to always be in classic master grades is this sliding mechanism in the upper leg. So when you bend that knee all the way, the upper armor does slide in that classic master grade sort of way. We've got a nice ankle here too, so you get everything you want. And we've got rotation at the toes. And just like we're seeing with a lot of kits lately, the heel and the front of the foot move independently. So I guess whatever terrain it's on, it can stand. The shoulder in here is fantastic. We've got armor flaps right here. And this pretty cool mechanism where the thrusters here, when they move down, this red flap segment moves up with them. That is nice. So now moving on to the wings, and there's a lot going on here too. First, we do have extension mechanisms to move the wings out like so, which is very, very nice. Each one of these wings moves slightly independently. There's that kind of multifaceted, shiny part that they were talking about. You see it a bit more in the... Oh wait, there, there, there it is, there, there, kinda. Anyway, so we've got the front moving wing. This one is attached to it, so those two move up together, as well as the cannon in behind it. Then we've got the next moving wing and its little sub wing, and then we've got a wing that is doing the rounds on its own right there. These also have forward and back flap flap motion, so you can get whatever you want out of them. And like we saw before, we do have the cannon up here, which can come out on its own like so, rotates like that, and can come forward like so. So a lot of movement and features up there in the wings. But yeah, that's all the elements that make up the articulation, but what do we get in the end? Sometimes we've got kits that there's loads of points of articulation, but not really much possibility in the end. But with this, Bandai have done what they set out to do. This is an SD kit with full master grade functionality. It has absolutely everything. This poses up a storm. This is so much fun to pose. It looks so, so cool with all the different moving gimmicks all the different moving flaps, all the articulation, this thing looks amazing in every single pose. And it's got a ridiculously dynamic head to boot. One of the things I've always loved about SD kits is their over the top head. They've always been very, very detailed and this has dialed it to 11. So yeah, that right there is it for the review. This without a single doubt as you'd expect is Gundarium tier, unmissable, fantastic. If you're a fan of master grade kits, this is like a little event. It's small, unique, but has everything you love about the line besides accurate scale. And if you're a fan of SD kits, this is a god among SDs. Sure, it might be not classic SD when it comes to the proportions, but this just does so, so much. You need no paint, no stickers, no nothing. It is glorious out of the box. And if you just love NX Edge figures, this is pretty much like a model kit of one, which is phenomenal as well. This thing, like I said, unmissable, you need one. Anyways, as always, thank you so, so much to Hobby Link for sending this on to me. Link in the description. Thank you to all of you for watching this video. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. As always, I can't end this video without thanking each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And of course, special thanks to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and the channel members here, including Ten Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Joe, Golil Rockstar, Lauren Seahack, or G59061, and Van Fawn.